I'm Christian. Uh, I just put here my profile picture. So as I appear sometimes in tweets and in GitHub issues, so you can just make the link uh, who's behind the keyboard. Uh, I've been having fun working uh, at the Circle team for the five uh, last years, um, participating as MISP uh, core developer uh, with those lovely guys here. Um, I've been mostly working on the uh, interaction uh, aspect, uh, integrating stuff with uh, MISP modules, with built-in uh, libraries. As Alex mentioned, I am also part of the uh, uh, six working group where I recently, uh, on Oasis, where I, I recently stepped in as, as co-chair so we can have more uh, interactions with the community using sticks and also to participate in the development of the standard. Um, I'm also enjoying cats and sometimes I take pictures with my camera and then the picture ends up in that laptop and I don't sort them. Uh, at least I enjoy taking the picture. So for today I am going to go through uh, some of the development steps uh, from the beginning of the Sticks integration, uh, then to the recent changes and the current status, and also a few insights of some of the um, work in progress and steps for the future. I will present some of the challenges we are facing and some of the evolutions uh, in relation with our participation to the Oasis TC. I hope I will have time for a demo. I should have time for a demo. So how it began, basically, um, I think most of you are familiar with MISP and know there is a MISP module system to um, basically have some export or enrichment processing on single events. It's not the topic of today, but this one is uh, built-in integrations, which, which means you can basically export data collections, not only single events. For the STIX integration, uh, it began with a MISP events export to STIX 1.1 and STIX 2.0. You can also um, give MISP the uh, content of your STIX file and play with the REST search. Uh, no, not, not exactly. You can also, you can give the content of your STIX file and play with the re uh, REST client and get a nice converted MISP event out of it. Um, for the MISP export uh, ability, uh, it's, it just works like any of the other uh, built-in uh, export libraries where with the REST search endpoints you can play with it and filter what you want to export. So just a quick example with the REST client. Uh, nothing too fancy to show here. Just you run the, you hit the run query button and you end up having that kind of JSON blob in this case because it sticks to. Um, the interesting part here for showing this right now is there is this kind of helpers to give you uh, all the indications you need on how to 
automate those uh, queries with uh, curl or with the Python equal using PyMisp. I will uh, leave more uh, details for the demo time. So today we are mostly going to speak about limitations, I'm afraid. Um, from the beginning of this um, feature of this integration, with the recent release of the Sticks 2.1 uh, format, we just run out of date. Uh, we just were not up to date anymore. With the previous uh, version, um, and I mean the JSON support for sticks to the sticks one dot one wasn't uh, fixing our issues. Another limitation, as I mentioned, is the ability to uh, export only events collections. Which means if you want, for instance, export your list of malicious IP addresses, single attributes, in this case, um, you uh, needed before to export the full events and then to filter the data. Um, good luck. Um, <clears throat> More on an organizational aspect. Um, it's available on MISP. It works well for most of the use cases. But if, for example, you have access to a MISP feed, you have the files, uh, yeah. You need then first to put that, those, uh, this data in your MISP. And then only you can convert the data. Um, just a few words about the issues we're, we're dealing with, uh, with MISP. So many, uh, things that are sometimes lost within the sea of several issues and to keep Following up with the sticks related issues, um, it wasn't working that well. So for all those limitations, we decided to go for something better, a standalone Python library on a separate GitHub repository where we could handle the issues separately, just focus on sticks on that repository and uh, just make sure it still works with MISP. So we recently released the support for sticks to the one. I just uh, had the chance also to update the existing support and to revamp the code. We now have uh, support for various data collections, namely MISP attributes, in addition to the MISP event collections. Um, also a pretty specific use case, you can, in theory, uh, filter data from the ZMQ channel, take the single, very single attribute and pass it on the go to the Python library and get some sticks converted content. Uh, yeah, just remind attributes are supported. It's going to be good enough for today. Um, a point that already has been mentioned by different speakers, uh, it's good to produce code 
it's better if you want it to be understood to have documentation. So instead of leaving it for the future, I decided to run automate automation towards it and to have um, automatically generated documentation as long as, long as I implement new tests, the documentation is regenerated. I will show it in a few slides. So the Python library is just replacing the former big Python script that is on the MISP core platform code. It's simply a basic uh, Python integration. You can With a Python integration, uh, you can, um, in your Python code, uh, use either the file names, give the file, the library loads the content and do the conversion, or you can, if you are already dealing with MISP format, either JSON row JSON or using the amazing PyMISP classes, it also works. And we also wanted to have a standalone usage for people, uh, fan, fans of command line usage as we are in our team. So just a few, uh, examples, uh, yeah, with a, help of the uh, command line usage, just to show the different options. Uh, it basically supports all the um, six versions. You can give it the files you wanna, the MISP files you wanna convert. Um, so for now it's, I think it's only supports MISP to sticks export. Uh, Um, yeah, in this example, we have two different use cases, uh, which comes from, uh, some kind of limitation with the REST client. You could all, all, only have your dozens of event collections or attribute collections or whatever converted into one, uh, six bundle. In this case, you can also just convert them uh, individually, if that make any sense to anybody. Uh, anyways, um, just to show quickly some of the uh, helpers that are implemented. Uh, misp 2 sticks parser is basically what is used by the um, built-in um, uh, MISP. Um, export library, um, which basically takes one um, sticks, uh, sorry, one MISP, uh, some MISP uh, content, events, whatever, as I already mentioned, and uh, does the conversion, then you can access the, you can extract the bundle uh, or any sticks content. Uh, then we also have some more advanced um, helpers like MISP collection, which basically simply re replicates what is made by the library, by the export library on MISP. So taking the different uh, data collections from MISP and uh, writing the results on the sticks file. So as I said, uh, there's a mapping documentation, um, mainly split it into two parts. Uh, very general overview, how are every data points on MISP converted into 
which into each uh, sticks object and a more detailed one with the detail on how each object attributes within uh, misp objects are actually mapped into each sticks field. Um, I don't want you to feel, fall asleep, so I think it will be better if I show it here. Um, okay. Documentation. So here, as I said, the overview for, uh, let's go for 2.1. So, yes, very general explanations. How are events, attributes, objects uh, exported? Then how are each attribute type um, exported as well? Uh, also, documentation for the uh, MISP object templates. Um, so I will show also the detailed one quickly. Whoops. And if we search for file, why not? Script. Mm. Yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah, let's go for another one. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so pretty standard uh, MISP object template and with some object attributes. And we just have here indicators. I'm not a big fan, uh, not because uh, of the patterning language that I will give a few words about later, but because in this case of the uh, observed data, it's just more visual. Um, if you just remembered from 10 seconds ago, we had four um, attributes within the ASIN um, object, number, name, and two submit announced. Uh, the goal with this is basically to show what is supported, the fields that are mapped, and for everything that is not, we have those little custom fields. So, uh, yeah, I will show some more content, more live demo in a few minutes. Um, so, Andras mentioned yesterday, we aim to have 100% matching, which is a bit optimistic, to be honest. But at least for the different objects from sticks mapping into uh, MISP, this is doable. Then for the patterning language, it's another question. Um, so I'm currently working intensively on the MISP, on the STIX 2.1 to MISP import feature. Um, it's an ongoing process. It's uh, really a work in progress. Uh, I will show you some of the challenges in a few um, slides. Um, also, some continuous development on the improvement of the currently supported uh, mapping, because as it has already been mentioned, we add more uh, templates, more attribute types, quite often. Uh, the stick standard evolves as well, and we're, we have ongoing discussions and um, 
work going on with um, partners like DHS uh, and MITRE. Um, we just have discussions with them to have a closer integration. So it's really uh, something that is continuous that will probably uh, not have a, an end point or a final release date. It just goes on. Uh, we want also to support more custom sticks format. The example of the ACS custom markings for um, the uh, CISA team um, is one of those um, well-defined custom formats that are, that is supported on sticks and that we want to have a closer integration with. Um, also, uh, Andras Nightmare, the taxi integration, sorry. I can bring tissues if you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess this is going to happen also. What comes next? Um, extend the feature to support any kind of data. So if you're familiar with the MISP terminologies, uh, there is nothing to export, only MISP uh, objects alone. Uh, we basically export the attributes, convert the attributes inside, but not the full um, object templates um, alone. I mean, it's, it's supported if you export the full event, but not the objects alone. Um, then more, uh, yeah, on a further roadmap, not close uh, yet, Six supports uh, the uh, a pretty um, yeah a pretty um, interesting feature to where you can add notes to any kind of data structure. Um, the issue for us is everything that is not an indicator or an observed data is sometimes convert it into uh, some of the context layer we have, so namely Mist Galaxies. Does it make sense to add, to add notes on or sightings on a threat actor or a campaign? I don't know, but this is on the roadmap for later. And the lowest priority port the sticks one uh, um, import feature. It's it hasn't changed, so it's basically mostly some code revamping. Nothing too urgent. Um, now let's jump into the. Challenges we are facing more often than we expected first. Um, something obvious, it is impossible to control what other partners or other vendors are creating. Um, and to have a close integration and a close conversion to keep the references between uh, the objects before and after the conversion. We want to keep UIDs, but we faced a lot of UIDs validation issues, and this is not my fault. Um, so we had issues, uh, people... Um, 
raising issues on GitHub. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, your script is broken. Uh, it turned out it was basically the sticks to Python library that was simply not loading the sticks content because some vendors produced sticks content with not the high enough, uh, not the strict enough validation for their UIDs. So what are we going to do with those? Um, there was an easy fix here um, because there's always something we can do. Basically, we just took the Python library and made a fork and changed the validation at least to load the file so it doesn't crash and people are not um, insulting me. Um, <clears throat> So to have uh, to to meet the MISP requirements that are now the same as the sticks two dot one, which is uh, a restriction to support uh, RFC forty one twenty two UIDs. Um, in other words, uh, version four five three, I guess. Um, we just load those files with the more permissive UIDs validation. The rest of all the other validations are the same as the initial Python library. And we keep a reference to the initial UID just because this is what we want to do, to have the reference to the original content. So it ended up our job and my job as well is to mind the gap between the two formats. Um, so for everything that is not um, supported, I already showed, showed um, the custom fields, but we also have custom objects that I will show quickly here. So if you're familiar with MISP, and I guess you are, uh, we don't only share threat intelligence. We can also have financial indicators, uh, any kind of other data. And it's obviously not the scope of sticks. So we just generate full custom objects. This one is an interesting one because this is not because uh, Six doesn't support HTTP method, but it's because uh, in this case, the required uh, fields are not there. And for uh, network traffic objects, you need to have some other uh, fields that are not, in this case, uh, don't exist in this case, uh, you know, anything else. Yeah, it's the same for the port. Um, you need to have at least a destination ref pointing to uh, an IP address or a domain or the uh, uh, source ref. So. For all those kind of use cases, um, custom objects are the way to go. And now the most tricky part, handling the infinite possibilities of a pardoning language. Um, I will give you some time to just look at those examples. Those are indicators. Um, yeah, 
it's in this case it's not really the difficulty or the, the complexity to parse what's in there, but what can we do with that? Um, are these filtering rules, are these something else? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure this is malicious, but it's in an indicator. Um, to be fair, it's on a playbook, so it's probably not actual real data, but still something I have to deal with. Um, this is an ongoing discussion with the journal mapping. Um, we're now trying to define whether we ex import things as um, MISP objects or attributes or as galaxy clusters. Uh, this is an ongoing discussion and we have some tricky um, cases like the course of action. How can we know whether it's an action taken or an action to be taken? Yeah, maybe, uh, hopefully you will have some more details and uh, documentation when we actually solve that issue. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we are uh, trying to be more active on the development of the standard participating to the OASIS CTITC. Uh, we are just about to submit some proposal to have a different way of contributing to bring more people so they can give more ideas and make this standard evolve the right way. Also, um, we hope it is going to be more visible uh, with, a, with an easier access to the resources. Uh, here is a small um, good practice uh, information, how to raise issues. Please, uh, if you're using it, please provide samples and uh, tell us how, how the issue happened. Any feedbacks are welcome, any ideas, any use case that we could support better, always welcome as well. Um, some useful links as always to reach out. Um, do I have some time for, okay, it started yeah. later, so yeah. You want to, what did, did you want to show? So maybe a quick... Uh, just be, if you have questions, I can just show things yeah. at the same time. It's fine. Just here. If you have any question, I'm just... Yeah, there's someone with a question at the same time. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry to ask the question, but do you already have a rough idea of when the taxi server support would be uh, oh. available? <laughs> I know to would who. Yeah, the one actually able to answer the question. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> so, so the answer is uh, no. <laughs> but <laughs> Thanks. Ho hopefully soon, but yeah, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it should have been done already. <laughs> All right, just before. Uh, do you know what you will do to Andras if he's not delivering? <laughs> <laughs> Any idea? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just a very quick um, demo here, how to actually import stuff. So I've loaded here the sticks content and with uh, that endpoint upload sticks, it just ends up, yeah, and then if we reload here, we have the event created, and again here, 
if you remember the slides, the attack pattern, we should probably make it a galaxy cluster, uh, which would avoid some big, big descriptions here. And yeah, basically that's it. And with some of the single attributes. And right before I finish, there is here the original file that is available. And I guess that's it for a demo. Thank, thank you very much. That's great.